Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Ah, it's Cabernet Day here on my comfy city. Uh, well, I think it's Cabernet Day. I'm not sure what the blend is for my final wine, uh, which uh, says Oat Medoc on there, and the Medoc being where they uh, tend to use a little more Cabernet Sauvignon than elsewhere in Bordeaux. I'm, I've shoved it in with these wines. Uh, the previous two are Chilean, and uh, so they and they say Cabernet Sauvignon on the label, so I'm pretty confident that uh, they should be in a Cabernet video. But the first one, uh, it's a 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon from Dun 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 India. I um, don't know if you've tried many Indian wines, uh, there's a, a few around that are worth having a look at, um, but I've not come across this winery before. Uh, the Fratelli, uh, Fratelli Wines, uh, 2011 Cabernet Sauvignon, weighing in at 13.5%. Let's give it a try. I don't know what's happened here, but it feels like someone's taken uh, the, uh, if you imagine the end of a bonfire, you've got an ashy stick, dunked it in the wine and stirred it around, and you're just left with this smoky, ashy character. It's a different sort of smokiness from uh, uh, from the, the, the one you get in some South African uh, red wines, but here it's, it's just dominating the wine. Underneath it, there is bits of uh, plum, berry, but... Uh, it's the, that ashy character is just dominant at the moment. Let's see whether it's, it's like that when you taste it. And it, I mean that ashy character just dominates the wine. It's um, it's very very hard to get past it. Um, it it takes away pleasure. Um, and so maybe there was some decent fruit in there, but I don't I don't know where that character's come from. Maybe they ordered slightly toasted barrels and got ones that had been almost cremated, um, or whether it's a vineyard thing. I don't know. Uh, let's move on. Uh, next one, Irazuris Estate Reserva, 2010 uh, Cabernet from the Aconcagua Valley in Chile. It's got that classic chili um, perfumed blackcurrant parcel. There's ever so slight hint of mint there, although the Aconcagua, or at least the, the bit of the Aconcagua where uh, Erasmus get their, their Cabernet grapes from, is on the warm side. So it's uh, maybe some of those more herbal minty sides, uh, minty notes uh, aren't as present here as they would be if they were from uh, well, bits of Maipo, for example. But <laughs> just choke that. Uh, but um, while I don't like that uh, over blackcurrant parcel character, here there's that, but there's also, a, it feels like a smoother, rounder, plummy nut, a plummy nut, plummy note as well. As well, I mean, I don't know whether that, that was uh, that was me uh, just putting words into my head, but I do get a slight nuttiness from somewhere. I don't know whether that's from uh, uh, terroir, from oak or what, but um, it smells, um, it smells okay. Straight down the line, true as a die, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, Chile used to do far more wines like this. Um, and then they went to, uh, they almost tried to overcomplicate it and uh, tried to get a bit, bit too much concentration in the wine. I like this precisely because it's not as big and butch and uh, alcoholic. I mean, it's 13.5%, so it's still quite uh, r rich and rounded. But... Um, it's got, it's still got a little bit of freshness about it. Uh, the last time I tasted, uh, well, something like Casiero del Diablo, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, which used to be, a, for me, a real banker. The last couple of vintages I've tasted, it feels like they've gone almost a little bit too ripe in uh, in, in what they're trying to do. Almost, oh, wines that are too concentrated. Uh, what's the problem with wines that are too concentrated? Um, well, have you ever tried to make a, a stronger cup of coffee by putting another dollop of uh, instant coffee in there? Yes, you do get something that's more depth of flavour. Uh, but it's not necessarily good depth of flavour. But here, it's got a refreshing side. You could almost, I mean, it's uh, it's June here. It's a pretty chilly June, but uh, um, if you if you were uh, eating outside, you, something like that, because it hasn't got any any hard tannins or anything that needs to resolve, you could stick it in the fridge for about not for long, about 20 minutes or so. Uh, it's got this freshness. It's got this blackcurrant edge. But it's the pure black currants rather than that slightly confected black currant pastel that I was smelling. It's um, it's a pretty tasty wine actually. Let's see what Big Brother's like. Uh, so this is the Erasmus Single Vineyard uh, Max Reserva Estate uh, from a single vineyard site. Uh, wine that is a true expression of unique location. Blah blah. 2009 vintage. Uh, let's give it a whirl. It's about um, uh, that's about ten quid. This is fourteen and a half, so uh, quite a bit more money. But uh, do you get a bit more wine for it? And again, that classic um, blackcurrant pastels character. Um, uh, here, it feels like it's, it's it's a year older. It feels rounder, smoother, softer. Um, oaks, I mean, adding a little, uh, so, yeah, I suppose toasty warmth to it. 
Uh, alcohol wise are we it's at heart it's half a degree more uh, but uh, again doesn't feel like it's gone over the top still feels like there's going to be a bit of freshness here bit of spice um, red berries red cherries but then blackberries and black currants as well some plumminess in there um, uh, and uh, this is where I, I get into this thing do I actually it, it is a more concentrated wine probably a bit more complex but um, which one would I actually want to drink? Um, uh, this is probably one that has got more potential to uh, uh, to improve over the next couple of years. The first one certainly certainly one to drink now. But in terms of um, uh, the things that do do their job, I actually I think I actually think I'd go for that. And uh, yeah, it's a wine to drink tonight. I like that. I prefer the first one for its freshness, for its honesty, and for as I was saying, it's less concentrated. It's not as much of a eat it by the spoon. It's 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 drinking by the glass glugger I'll, I'll keep an eye on that second one because I, it, it is it is well made and I think that Erasmus have had a, uh, a change of style in the last few years it, they, that that black currant pastel character used to just dominate the wines you, you almost regardless of variety that was the thing that just just like swamped the wines I remember trying their first Sangiovese and uh, almost thinking well I don't know what it is but it's a, it's an Erasmus wine here it feels like there's a bit more sympathy to the fruit that was there in the first place and um, yeah I like, I like both of them but uh, probably choose to drink the other I weird I'd give the second one a higher mark I give I drink the first one if that makes sense slightly does to me but uh, not all that much you can pull me up on that one day but let's find do the final one uh, which is uh, in Bordeaux it's Chateau Grand Clapeau Olivier uh, not an exactly a well-known Chateau uh, Aume Doc uh, and 2009 vintage now this comes from the Yvon Mo organization um, who uh, there are uh, They've got a bit of a negotiation business. They've got uh, so they buy some wines in and uh, they uh, and, and bottle some of those themselves. Uh, but they also have got, got a few of their own estates. I'm not sure whether this is an estate that they own or whether they actually uh, just I, I, I do. Dis yeah, the Maison Bouteille à Chateau Par. So Yvon Mo is bottling this wine. It's not something that they're just a distributor of. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. Now, one of the problems I've had with the wines from Yvonne Mo is there's a, a certain type of oak that they're quite fond of, uh, and it gives a slightly, what I call a red sawdusty feel to uh, quite a lot of the wines, and um, I get a touch of that here. Uh, 2009 was a really lovely, lush vintage, and so I get a little bit of that lushness there, but um, this slightly, um, yeah, slightly sawdusty oak character is, is there rather prominently at the moment. I've only just opened it, it may be that with a bit of time, a bit of agitation, that dissipates and uh, the fruit comes through more, but um, I do notice it. Actually the fruit's okay, I mean it, it, when you come to taste it, the oaks, uh, the oaks it, it, it's almost like you can smell it, but then when you come to taste it, it retreats into the background, allowing this um, blackcurrant plumminess to, um, uh, to protrude. Um, and the finish you're left with, uh, yes, it's generosity rather than that that slightly clunky oak tannin uh, that I was when I was just hoping it wasn't going to be there. It's not there. Um, I can't remember how much this is. I think this is from Spa. Um, so bullet, bullet to Spa for putting something like that on the shelves. It's um, pretty decent as claret goes, uh, as affordable claret goes. I can't remember exactly the price, but you'll see on the video. Um, and um, I, I don't like it. I'm going to have another drink. Sorry, taste. Yeah, it's got a nice earthiness as well coming through. So it's not just fruit, and um, uh, yeah, the more I sniff it, the more that oak is, is like just going, going dissipating slowly. Um, so um, apologies for those initial comments, um, uh, but um, um, it's growing on me. Uh, still, yeah, probably a toss-up between that and the uh, first Erasmus, which I would want to drink tonight. The one I wouldn't want to drink is the Fratelli. The one I'd keep an eye on is the Erasmus single vineyard, but uh, an interesting quartet. See you soon.